Hello students, welcome to the second presentation on the regression analysis. I'm Dr. David Nagaratnam, a postdoctoral researcher in flow induced noise and cavitation control laboratory, Chungnam National University, Korea. Today we will learn about polynomial regression, linear least squares model and finally about nonlinear regression analysis. Our objective in the regression analysis is to fit a model. Once we decide on the model to represent the data, we want to find the model coefficients that best represent the data observations. Then we find the coefficient of determination R squared value. And finally, plot the model predictions together with the observations to see the goodness of the fit. In the previous presentation, we learned about simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, with and without constant coefficients. And we solved a few examples for those models. Today, we will learn about polynomial regression, linear least squares model, and finally about nonlinear regression analysis. The model equation for polynomial regression in one independent variable for the ith data point can be represented by the equation shown here. The summation of the product of the coefficients and the corresponding powers of the independent variable can be written by this summation. Here EI is the error associated with the model finding when compared with the ith data point. The objective function is the sum of square of errors at each of the data points. In order to find the minimum of the sum of square of residual or the sum of square of errors, we differentiate SR partially with respect to the model coefficients A0, A1 until AM and set it equal to zero. This gives us the normal equations, which upon solving gives the model coefficients. Now specifically, let us consider the regression analysis of a second order polynomial, whose model equation at the ith data point is given here. The objective function here is the square of the residuals. The summation of the square of residuals at each of the data point is represented by this equation. Upon differentiating the equation partially with respect to A0, we get this equation upon equating it to 0. Now, upon rearranging the terms, we obtain this condition for the stationary point. This equation shown in the box is the normal equation. Further, upon carefully differentiating the objective function partially with respect to a1 and a2 and setting them equal to 0, we obtain the normal equations as shown here within the boxes. The boxed equations are the normal equations when written together have the form as shown here. We have three unknown coefficients a0, a1 and a2 for the polynomial regression of the order 2. We have these three normal equations with three unknowns as shown here. These three equations can be written in a matrix form as shown here. The elements of the matrix such as n, summation of xi, summation of xi square, summation of uh, xi cube, summation of xi to the power 4, and then summation of the independent variable y, summation of the product of the independent variable and the dependent variable, the summation of the product of the independent variable and the square of the independent variable can all be deduced from the given given data points. 
the product of the inverse of the matrix on the left hand side and the matrix on the other side of the equation will give us the model coefficients. Now let us consider the polynomial regression of the mth order polynomial. The model equation for the mth order polynomial in one independent variable x for the ith data point with error ei is shown here. The objective function is the summation of the square of the difference between the data point and the model finding which is shown here. Now upon differentiating the objective function partially with respect to the coefficients, mo the model coefficients, here we have m plus 1 coefficients, we obtain m plus 1 equations as shown here. If we look at these equations, let's look at the first equation, we have the model coefficient a0 we have n, n is the total number of the data points given to us. a1 is the model coefficient, then we have summation of xi, summation of xi square, summation of uh, xi to the power m, summation of the independent variable y, then we have summation of uh, xi cube, summation of xi to the power m plus 1, and then now let us uh, look at the last equation which we have which is uh, which has uh, a naught and then su summation of xi to the power m summation of xi to the power m plus 1 until summation of xi to the power 2m and then we also have on the other side of the equation we have the summation of the product of the independent variable and the dependent variable rise to the power 1, rise to the power 2 until rise to the power, uh, the independent variable rise to the power m. Each of the summation values can be deduced from our given data set. Now the normal equations can be written in matrix form as shown here. As discussed earlier in the previous slide, the each of the element of this these matrices namely n summation of xi summation of xi square summation of xi to the power m summation of xi cube summation of xi to the power m plus 1 summation of xi to the power 4 and until summation of xi to the power 2m and then on the other side of the equation we have summation of yi summation of yi xi summation of yi xi square summation of y xi to the power m. Each of these terms can be deduced from our given experimental data set. Now let us consider an example for the polynomial regression. We have one dependent variable which is y and one independent variable which is x. Now, by the general linear least squares method, by the, by the polynomial regression method, we have these matrices which have to be solved. We have uh, n, we have the matrices of elements n, summation of xi, summation of xi square, summation of xi cube, summation of xi to the power of 4. And then we have summation of the independent variable, summation of the product of the independent variable and the dependent variable rise to the power 1, summation of the product of the independent variable and the dependent variable rise to the power 2. Now let us find each of the elements of these two matrices. Finding each of the elements of those two matrices and uh, taking the inverse of the matrix that is on the left hand side of the equation and taking a product of the matrix matrix which is in which is the inverse of the matrix on the left hand side of the equation and the mat and the vector which we have on the other side other hand of the other side of the equation 
So you have find the, the model coefficients A0 and A1 and A2 for this particular data set to be equal to 2.48, 2.36 and 1.86 respectively. And thus we have our polynomial equation of the order 2 given by this form. Now having determined the model coefficients, let's see how our model is uh, by finding the coefficient of determination. Essentially, uh, when, uh, in our definition of finding the R squared value, we have uh, SM, SR, here it is SM, SR and SM. SM is essentially the summation of the square of the difference between YI and Y mean. And then SR is the summation of square of the difference between YI and Y model. And hence, upon finding the Y mean, Y mean is essentially the mean of the independent variable. The model findings are given in this particular column over here. Now the square of the difference between y and y mean is given here in this particular column. Upon taking the summation of it, we get SM. And then uh, the difference between y and the y model. Upon taking, uh, upon taking a square of it, we have this particular column. Now the summation of it, we have it to be equal to 0.1. Upon substituting these values of SM and SR into our definition of R squared, we find R squared to be equal to 0.99, which is a good value. And hence our model coefficients are closely representing the observations. Now let us consider the linear least square model. Linear least square model is a very important model when it comes to regression analysis because it can easily represent every other regression model such as the simple linear regression or the multiple linear regression or the polynomial regression or even trigonometric regression series. Say for example, uh, in our case, the model equation is represented by, for the linear least squares model is represented by this equation where the independent variable at the ith data point is represented by the product of the A0. A0 is the model coefficient with Z0. Z0 is the, is the, uh, dependent variable is the independent variable a1 is the model coefficient z1 is another independent variable we have a2 the model coefficient product multiplied with the z2 and then we have terms until am multiplied with zm and then ei is the error term now doing a simple linear regression by take setting Z not equal to 1 and Z1 equal to X1, Z2 equal to X2. We have the simple linear regression more regression easily represented uh, by setting Z not equal to 1, Z1 equal to X1 and Z2 equal to X2. Similarly, the model for this is the model uh, for model equation for the multiple linear regression. Now by setting Z0 equal to 1, Z0 equal to X1, Z0 Z2 equal to X2 and Zm equal to Xm, where X1, X2 and Xm are the independent variables. Here we have the multiple linear regression easily represented by means of linear least square model. Similarly, if we consider the polynomial regression, here is the model equation for the polynomial equation, polynomial regression. The Here it is a polynomial of the order M. By setting Z0 equal to 1, Z1 equal to X, Z2 equal to X square, and Zm equal to X to the power M, we'll be able to represent the polynomial of the order M 
in terms of linear least square model. Similarly, when we have a trigonometric, when we consider the trigonometric regression, there we have a constant added together with a1 times sine of omega t, a2 times cos of omega t plus an error term. We can represent this. Um, there is a 1 over here, there is a, a naught is multiplied with 1. 1 can be said to be equal to z naught and sine omega t, t can be said to be said to be equal to z1, cos omega t is set to z2. In that way, we will be able to represent uh, such a trigonometric series in terms of a linear least square model. Now the model equation for the linear least square model is shown here. Here a naught is the model coefficient. It is multiplied with z naught. Z naught is the independent variable. We have a1 to be another model coefficient. We have z1. a2 is the model coefficient. z2 is the independent variable we have. And until am, am is the model coefficient and then zm is the independent variable. Here we have m plus 1 equations with m plus 1 unknown model coefficients, model coefficients going from a0, a1, a2 until am. Hence we have m plus 1 model coefficients and we have m plus 1 equations. These equations can be written in a matrix form as shown here. We have y vector which is essentially the vector of the independent variable. We have the z vector, this is the z vector which is essentially formed by stacking up the independent variables. Here the independent variables are z0, z1 until zm and then we have the vector of the model coefficients going from a0, a1, a2 until am. We have m plus 1 elements in this vector and then we have the finally the error vector with the elements going from e1, e2 until en for the end data points. Now the matrix which is shown in the previous slide can be written in this particular form. The y, we have the y, mat, y vector which is the sum of the product of z matrix and the model coefficient vector summed up together with the error vector. Now our objective is here once again to reduce the summation of the square of errors. The condition for uh, reducing the summation of the square of errors as deduced by Matthews and Fink is shown here. Essentially it is the product of z transpose matrix multiplied with z matrix multiplied together with the A matrix on the left hand side and on the other side of the equation we have z transpose matrix multiplied with y matrix. Now these two matrices z transpose multiplied with z and z transpose multiplied with y can be calculated by the given data points. Now here we are considering the multiple, let us consider an example for multiple linear regression with two independent variables x1 and x2, the dependent variable is y. For such a scenario by multiple linear regression method, the equation, the normal equations when written in matrix form is shown here where the elements of the matrices are n, summation of x1i, summation of x1, summation of x2, summation of x1 square, summation of x2 square, summation of the product of x1 and x2, and then we have summation of uh, the independent variable, summation of the product of the independent variable and the first uh, dependent variable, summation of the product of the dependent variable and the summation of, summation of the product of the dependent variable and the second independent variable. 
Each of these elements can be calculated from the given experimental data points and the model coefficients can be found. However, here we are learning uh, the linear least squares model and hence uh, we will consider the linear least squares model uh, application also but using the multiple linear regression analysis which we learned earlier we are here able to find the model coefficients to be model coefficients a0 a1 and a2 to be equal to minus 4.77 minus 0.91 and 6.68 now let us do the same for the same data set using this underlined general linear least squares method here the z matrix is essentially formed by stacking the independent variables z0, z1, z2 until zm now that we have a constant coefficient we have this particular column of ones and then this is the first independent variable and this is the second independent variable now this is the z matrix formed by stacking up ones in the first column which is due to the constant coefficient and then which is, and then the first independent variable is stacked as the second column and the second independent variable is stacked as the, as the second as the third column and then upon take we have as a transpose Z transpose when multiplied with Z gives this particular matrix and then we have Z transpose when it's multiplied with the dependent variable Y gives us this particular this particular uh, vector column vector now the condition for the uh, minima of the residuals minima of the sum of square minima of the sum of uh, square of the residuals or the minimation of the minima of the sum of square of errors requires that the, this condition be satisfied this underlying condition be satisfied now upon this applying the uh, z transpose z and z transpose y which we have calculated over here we are able to find a0 a1 and a2 and find it to be exactly equal to that of the multiple linear regression method the model coefficients obtained using multiple linear regression method agree with our findings from linear least squares model linear least squares model uh, being a method which can uh, be used in the place of uh, be it, a lean, be it a linear regression analysis be it, or a multiple linear regression or a polynomial regression it is widely preferred as it is a single method which fits most of the uh, models for the data points linear least squares model is hence preferred widely now let us consider and now let us find the r squared value for the uh, data point data points uh, here x1 and x2 are the independent variables and y is the dependent variable the model findings are given in this particular column the model findings from the linear least squares model the difference between y and y mean when it's squared gives us this particular column when it is summed up gives us sm this particular value is sm when it is summed up gives us sm uh, sm is uh, found to be equal to 387.08 and then we have the square of y minus y model given by this particular column whose summation gives us sr sr is found to be equal to 17.12 r squared by definition is the difference between ST and SR over ST which gives us R squared to be equal to 0.96 now let us consider the multiple linear regression without a constant coefficient earlier we considered multiple linear regression with a constant coefficient now we are considering an example with 
out a model coefficient here the independent variables are x1 and x2 and the dependent variable is y using a, a multiple linear regression which we considered earlier we have the uh, normal equations written in this particular matrix form whose elements x1 square x2 square summation summation of x1 square summation of x2 square summation of x1 x2 and summation of y x1 summation of y x2 can be deduced from our experimental data set that is given to us from which we find a1 and a2 to be equal to 1.11 and 4.23 respectively now let us do the same um, so uh, uh, let us arrive at the same solution using general linear least squares model which we learned just now essentially in general linear least squares method the z matrix is uh, constructed by stacking up the columns stacking up the columns with the uh, independent variable here in our case we are considering a model without a constant coefficient and hence we do not have in the z matrix a column of ones but rather we have the first independent variable and second independent variable stacked in as the first column and second column of the matrix z and then the transpose of the z matrix is given here the product of the z transpose and z is given by this particular matrix now z transpose y is given by this vector column vector now using the condition for the minimum of the sum of square of residuals we obtain the model coefficients a0 and a1 to be these values now the model values model findings give us are given in this particular column now the difference between y and y mean when it's square gives this column and then the difference between y and y model when it's squared gives us this column based on which sm and sr can be found from our definition of r square which is the difference between sm and sr over sm gives r square to be equal to 0 0.94 Now let us consider the nonlinear regression analysis. Here, the nonlinear model which we have is an exponential model given by y, y the independent variable represented by c times e to the power ax. C and a are the model coefficients which are to be found. X is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. In order to find c and a, we want to minimize the summation of square of residuals. Here the uh, residual is summation of y minus c e to the power ax square. Now upon differentiating this objective function partially with respect to a and c and equating it to b 0 and rearranging the terms, we, uh, we obtain these two equations, equations 1 and 2. Now these equations, unlike the equations, unlike the normal equations which we saw earlier, or non-linear in nature. Essentially, it, there are several products present here and hence uh, uh, such a non set of non-linear equations, the two, two equations in two unknowns can be solved using iteratively using uh, newton raphson method. However, there is a simpler uh, way of solving such as non-linear model by linearizing the terms say for example taking logarithm of bo on both sides of the equation shown here y is equal to c e to the power ax then we have logarithm of y being given as uh, logarithm of c plus a into x logarithm of e to the power x becomes a into x then we have then we can represent logarithm of y as capital y and then logarithm of c can be represented as a0 and then small x can be written as capital X and then a can be written as a1. 
Now let us consider an example data set, a nonlinear data set. Here the independent variable is x and the dependent variable is y. Logarithm of y is given in this particular column. The model which we are considering is y is equal to c e to the power of ax. Upon linearizing, we have this linearized equation. Now we are uh, solving it using linear least squares model, general linear least squares method. Essentially, we have a constant coefficient and hence we have a column of ones. And then we have the independent variable x stacked together, stacked together in the form of a, in the column two. This gives us the Z matrix and then taking as a transpose of it and using the condition for the minimum of summation of square of errors. This is the condition for the summation minimum of the summation of uh, square of errors. We will be able to find the model coefficients. If we if this, uh, so this uh, model, which is essentially this particular equation, y is equal to a1 into x plus a0 can also be solved using simple linear regression method where uh, we have the mat uh, normal equations given by this particular matrix matrix form. Here are the elements n summation of xi, summation of uh, xi square and then summation of the independent variable, summation of product of the dependent variable and the independent variable can be found from which a0 and a1 can be found. However, uh, uh, our objective being to learn the general linear least squares model, we have the z equation given by this particular form with the one stacked in the column one and the independent variable stacked in the column two and then taking z transpose into z and z transpose into y. We'll be, we are able to find a0 and a1, the model coefficients and then based on our definition, we find c to be equal to exponent of a0. Thus we find uh, our, we are able to arrive at our model for the nonlinear data set. This is the exponential model with which we find for the, which represents the nonlinear data set. Now, uh, any nonlinear model can be represented, uh, can be wisely written in order to, uh, can, can be linearized in order to um, solve it using general linear least squares model if written if written in a proper manner. Say for example, we already considered the exponential uh, model being represented by y is equal to alpha e to the power of beta x taking logarithm on both sides. Logarithm of y is the summation of the logarithm of alpha and logarithm of e to the power beta into x becomes beta into x. Hence we have y is equal to a0 plus a1 into x where uh, y is logarithm of y and a0 is logarithm of alpha and then a1 is beta and then small x becomes capital X. Now if we have a power model such as the one shown here taking logarithm on both sides logarithm of y is logarithm of alpha plus beta logarithm of uh, x1 gamma logarithm of x2 this is the power law. The power law model can be linearized as shown here. Now this logarithm of y can be termed y capital Y. This logarithm of alpha can be termed a0 and then beta can be termed a1 and then logarithm of x1 can be termed capital X1. Gamma can be termed a2 and then logarithm of x2 can be termed capital X2 and thus uh, we may proceed to solve this either using a simple linear regression, multiple linear regression or using a general linear least squares model. Now let us consider another example which can be linearized and solved using general linear least squares model. Say for example, um, here we have y being represented as a product of alpha and x over beta plus x 
Taking inverse of this equation and proceeding to simplify, we will be able to write it in a form of a, in a linear form and then proceed to solve it using a general linear least squares model. Now this brings us to the conclusion of uh, today's presentation. Today we learnt about the regression analysis, in particular we learnt about the polynomial regression polynomial regression of the order 2 and then we saw polynomial regression of the order m and then we introduced we were introduced to a uh, general linear least squares model where we saw the condition for the uh, minimize minima of summation of square of errors and then uh, we also saw a few nonlinear models where we were able to linearize them and solve them using general linear general linear uh, least squares model. I hope you are benefited by this presentation. Please do share it with your friends who uh, also find it useful. I thank you for your attention. God bless.